My name's Paul Bollinger. I've been a woodcarver since 1980. In 2019 and 2020, I carved what I call the Great Sea Monster Cask. And my wife and a couple of her friends painted it. This is a video about painting the Great Sea Monster Cask. Painting the islands and the monsters that are on that cask. The carving of the cask took months. There's a separate video on that topic. And so eventually the cask was ready. It was ready to be handed over to Camille and her friends to paint. And I thought I could build a little time-lapse image here for you to see how it all came together, just to refresh your mind on this. So remember this picture of the beautiful cask end. The cartoons were laid up onto the cask end Carving began, piece by piece, layer by layer, item by item. Carve a cartoon, remove a cartoon, carve a cartoon. More of the barrel becomes carved. The first pass, the second pass, the third pass. At some point, I looked at it and said, I need to think about what the colors might look like. Am I done? Am I ready to turn it over? And then finally, at the end, you can see how deeply carved it is, how it stands out on its own without the paint, although the painting makes it a masterpiece. But the carving set the stage for the painting. You can see the designs here, you can see the size of it, you can see the complexity of it, and you really, really can't wait to see what it looks like when it gets painted. In this video, we'll see how the cask was transformed from the end of the carving, as it looked here, into a painted masterpiece. So from this point where I had finished carving and preparing the cask for painting, the three artists selecting the items that they wanted to paint went to work over a period of months using oil paints and painting slowly they transformed that cask into this masterpiece. And so this video will show step by step how that was accomplished. The artists used oil paint for the painting of the cask. You can see here the tubes arrayed on the table next to the carving, along with supplies, brushes, and other things. They used oil paint because it lasts a long, long time. And part of the idea of this cask was that it was a piece of art that would last centuries. A substantial cask end, well carved and painted with oil paint. And we think it should last definitely for centuries. My wife Camille has been painting our carvings for 40 years. And so she was the lead painter. She was in charge of the painting, although her friends helped her. You can see here that she started at the top working on the sky. So here's a couple pictures showing working on the sky area. Notice how the barrel is raised up on the stand so that the painters can approach and stand and paint. On the lower half, they ended up actually sitting and painting, but on the upper part of the barrel, they could stand and paint. So they would pick something, and you see here, there's a picture taped on top of the barrel, on top of the cask, that shows different choices for coloring the face of the sun. A video like this makes it look like things happen quickly, but they didn't really. They happened methodically and slowly. Many, many coats had to be applied in different places to get the effect that was desired. But here, these two pictures show the progression of the sky. And so most of the elements of the sky have been at least painted for the first time. And you might be able to see where the Milky Way is going to end up. And you can see that actually a couple of the monsters have been started down below uh, on the sea. So the sky is progressing top to bottom 
and then monsters are going to progress usually from the top down to avoid smearing at the bottom. When someone would be working at the top, inadvertently it would be possible to smear a painting if it was done down at the bottom. So top down, left to right, right to left, whatever it took, the painting progressed. You can see here that the background is stained first with some linseed oil uh, mixed with different elements of paint. And that's to let the wood soak in the desired colored layer. You can also see by the little step stool there that sometimes it was necessary to get on the stool to reach the part you wanted to work on. The other interesting thing you can see is that she's wearing a mask. So COVID-19 had started during this exercise. And so some of the work was done while the artists were wearing masks. Sometimes the artists worked alone, but often uh, two or three were there at the same time, exchanging ideas about colors and how to do something, a technique, uh, what to do next. And so you can see here, at this point, it was a nice and tidy work area. Lots of room to get to the cask and lots of room to maneuver around the cask. So we had a little bit of fun as well as a lot of work. This shot shows how the staining is progressing down toward the bottom of the barrel and different monsters are being worked on. On the right, Work has gone on with Japan and Vietnam. On the left, an orange octopus and some other creatures have been painted. And then down on the left, California has been started. Grapes have been painted onto California. And so you can see what happens. Different artists want to paint different things and they progress that way, picking something that they want to do and creating something in some cases unexpected. We didn't expect that octopus that I had carved over there on the left side to turn out to be peach, but it did, and it turned out to be great. You can see here that on the lower part of the barrel, uh, at times it was necessary to sit and work because the work is very meticulous. It's tedious, tiny little things being done you need to focus and you don't want to be bent over for hours at a time. And so here work is going on on the state of California, which is one of the islands on the cask. And you can see just above her hand there, a gold miner with his shovel and his pan, some grapes, a spotted owl, Mount Shasta on the far north of California. And yes, that's a UFO off to the side of Mount Shasta. Here we can look at the entire cask at one time and you can see that Wales has been painted or partially painted in the middle. A giant whirlpool has gone in up towards Vietnam and Japan. We have a purple octopus totally unexpected and wonderfully done. But there's still a lot left to be done. And you can see what's going on here when you look at these shots like this. So if you notice on the left, work has not been done on that monster that you see on the right, down on the lower right hand corner. What happens to be probably a narwhal, but a narwhal represented as a unicorn. You can also see that other creatures have been dropped in just above the narwhal. And so this is how the work went. Creature by creature, spot by spot, pick something, paint it, uh, and then move on to the next one. So the face of the entire cask is going to be painted, but take a look at some of the detail. As you focus down in, you can see that the monsters require a lot of detail. And this is only the beginning. Uh, in some cases, it was three or four different times that a monster would be worked on to get it just right.
And so it went, monster by monster, color by color, artist by artist, working on the cask. You can see here it's approaching the bottom. Much of the, much of the uh, face has been done. Most of the monsters have been touched the first time at least. Some of the background now has been put on. Look up above in the sky. Can you see the Milky Way starting to form, moving from lower right up to top left of the sky? And you can see the sea appearing behind the monsters and behind the islands. Although it's not been detailed much yet, you can see how it's going to be when it's done. Work continued, standing, sitting. Notice it's gotten a little messy now. Things are spread around, 65 tubes of paint, numerous brushes, work goes on. So this is where it started, remember that? And then we went to the sky and we worked a little bit on the sky and the sky continued and the background was laid in for the Milky Way. Some of the monsters were started. The staining went on the back and other monsters were added and we moved top to bottom across the cask. Details are added. The Milky Way has become uh, almost real at the top and the monsters are going towards the bottom. And you can see here, almost reached the bottom. And now, look at this. If you look carefully and closely, it's not quite perfect yet. More detail has to be added to the eyes of the monsters. A little more detail up in the Milky Way. But by and large, it's almost done. And now, it looks to be 99% complete. Still a few little details missing here and there, but you wouldn't really notice if you didn't know what the final product was looked like. If you had never seen it, if you had never stood next to it, never put your hand on it to feel it. But you can get the idea now of the months and hours that the painting took to accomplish this great sea monster cask. So that was the painting of the great sea monster cask. There are a couple other videos you can watch. One is about the inspiration for this great sea monster cask. How did it get started? Why does it look like it does? Why are there monsters? Why are there islands? And another one, another video on carving of the great sea monster cask. Where did the cask come from? How was it prepared? How was it carved and made ready for this painting that you just watched? So thank you very much for watching. I hope you look at the other videos.